At its peak, the U.S. had more than 30,000 nuclear warheads. Beginning in the 1960s, it started signing arms control agreements with the Soviet Union and reducing its nuclear arsenal. Today, the U.S. has far fewer warheads, but the aging arsenal is in the middle of a decade-long modernization effort expected to cost over $1 trillion. The Federation of American Scientists estimates that the U.S. has 5,177 nuclear warheads, but there's a lot more to it than just the top-line number, so let's break it down. Of the U.S.'s 5,177 nuclear warheads, 1,770 are deployed, 1,930 are in reserve, and 1,477 are retired. We'll get back to that in a little bit. First, let's look at the active warheads, which are broken up into three categories. Land, sea, and air, known as the nuclear triad. There are 800 warheads assigned to the Intercontinental Ballistic Missile Force, known as ICBMs, but only half of those are actively deployed. The rest are in storage. The 400 active warheads are split across 400 land-based ICBMs, called Minuteman III missiles, that can reach virtually every corner of the planet. The Minuteman III missiles were first deployed in the 1970s, but have been modernized multiple times. The missiles are further divided into wings assigned to three Air Force bases. The silos that house those missiles are spread across the high plains. The sea leg of the nuclear triad is assigned 1,920 warheads. Of those, 970 warheads are deployed on submarine-launched missiles called tridents, with another 950 in storage. Each trident missile can carry up to eight nuclear warheads, but they normally carry an average of four or five warheads. There are currently 14 submarines that can carry about 20 missiles each. Eight of them are in the Pacific and based near Bangor, Washington, and six are in the Atlantic, based at Kings Bay, Georgia. This represents the largest share of the U.S. nuclear arsenal within the nuclear triad. The 980 warheads that make up the air leg of the triad are split into three buckets. The first is 500 warheads assigned to the B-52 Stratofortress airplane. The U.S. has 76 B-52 bombers, of which 46 are nuclear capable. Each of those nuclear capable bombers can carry up to 20 warheads in air-launched cruise missiles. The second bucket is the B-2 Spirit. The U.S. currently operates 19 B-2 bombers, which are all nuclear capable. Each B-2 can carry up to 16 nuclear bombs. Between the B-52 and the B-2, there is a capacity of 780 warheads, but only about 300 are at bomber bases and considered to be deployed. The remaining 480 are in storage. In addition to the 780 bombs within the strategic triad, there are 200 bombs considered non-strategic. Of those, 100 are stored as backup, and the remaining 100 are stored at six bases in five European countries. Finally, in addition to the 3,700 active warheads, there are 1,477 retired nuclear warheads that are awaiting dismantlement, a process that has gotten slower over the years. In the 1990s, the U.S. dismantled 1,000 warheads per year, but in 2023, the number was only 69. There are a lot of factors that slow down the dismantling process, including technical complexity, legislative requirements, even the COVID-19 pandemic. Over the next three years, the U.S. is spending $1.2 trillion to overhaul its nuclear weapons arsenal. At least, that's what's planned. Historical trends and chronic delays to the modernization program indicate that the cost is likely to increase over time. The Minuteman III is slated to be replaced by the Sentinel ICBM, with the first test flight scheduled for 2026 and beginning operation by 2032 or later. The Ohio-class submarines will be replaced by Columbia-class submarines in the late 2020s with the Trident missile expected to undergo a substantial life extension to operate through 2084. The B-52 is similarly being upgraded to the B-52J, 
which will keep the aircraft operational into the 2050s. The B-2 bomber will be replaced with at least 100 B-21 bombers that will gradually take over the fleet in the 2030s. Early in the second Trump administration, Trump expressed interest in reducing the number of nuclear weapons stockpiled between the US, Russia, and China. However, New START, the last remaining treaty governing the number of nuclear weapons between the US and Russia, is set to expire in 2026, with no negotiations currently underway to extend it. If history is any guide, the goal should be to sign treaties that establish hard limits on the number of nuclear weapons. We've lived in a world without such treaties in the past, and would be wise to avoid returning to it.